Okay, now we're going to start talking about derivatives. And just like limits, um, I explained that the, the idea of a limit is the approaching height of a function, right? So if you've got a function like that and it's asking for the limit on either side as you're approaching, what they're asking for is as you get infinitely close to 3, what is that height going to be right there? And that height is the limit. All right. Well, derivative is instantaneous velocity, which is slope, just like when you were in Algebra 1 or pre-algebra and you learned about slope of a line, right? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or delta y over delta x, depending on where you learned it. That's the slope, the average slope. Well, a derivative is instantaneous slope. And what that means is, say you've got a parabola. Well, if you start here and go here, that's average velocity. But if you say at this moment exactly right there, what is the slope at that exact point? And notice the shape of that. It's touching the graph in exactly one place. So that's a tangent line. It's tangent to the function. So we call it m tangent. And m tangent, um, a derivative is the a derivative is the function derivative is the function that produces instantaneous velocity at a given moment in time or a given x value or t value. So that's a definition of that. I, that's not, I'm sure, the exact definition, but think about that as the exact. So if you had a graph that looked like this, well, whatever that slope is right there is very different from that moment in time with that slope. And the derivative produces the function where we can find that slope. Okay, so... Before we can get to derivative rules, uh, we're going to talk about average rates, instantaneous rates, and we're going to talk about the formal definition of a limit. And then once we know the limit rules or the derivative rules, you won't have to use the longer process. Okay, for each problem, find the average rate of change. That just means find the slope. So... Here's your x value. Plug x into this. So 1 squared plus 2, we have 3. So here's your x1, y1. And then here's your x2. 2 squared is 4 plus 2 is 6. So now we just use the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, definition of slope. But because we're finding the average rate, remember that example I gave? Notice if you had a circle and a line goes through the circle like that, that's called a secant line. And one that touches in one location is a tangent line. So when you're going through a, a graph, that's going to be a secant line. So when we want to find average rate, we find the slope of the secant line. So you, you find your two x's, your two y's, and just use slope. And yes, and some people might prefer you to write it like this. Some people, uh, some professors might prefer you to write it just dy over d, dx. Um, I like students to do this. So I know that they're tying what they just did into, oh, we just found the slope of the secant line. Okay.
Now you're going to take it one step further and you're going to find the equation. Remember, whenever in Algebra 1, whenever you find the equation of the secant line, if you know an x and a y value and you know a slope, you use point slope. So y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. But now we're going to be specific. We're using, we're finding the equation of the secant line. So I'm going to have you put y secant and then slope secant. And so the first step that you do is you find the slope of the secant line. And here are your two x and y values. Plug it in. And I just went through it step by step. So you found the secant. And then I'm going to take that slope. And I took this second point right there. And I plugged it into slope intercept form. So y secant. Subtract y is equal to the slope secant x minus the x value. So y secant subtract the 5, which is, I could have used 0 0.01. The result will be the same if you do it correctly. Equals the slope of the secant line 4 time, uh, times the expression x subtract 1. And then you simplify that and you end up with the uh, the equation of the secant line, 4x plus 1. So you find the slope of the secant line, and then you use, whoops, not slope intercept, and I'm glad I caught that, point slope, to find the equation of the line. Okay, and here is a rational equation. So, it's a little bit more time consuming to do this, but the process is the same. Your x1, y1, um, x2, y2, find the slope. And I've done that here. So in this case, uh, the slope ended up being negative uh, 1 tenth. I don't know why I did that right there. So there you go. And then, oh, and then we're going to use, I use the point um, negative one and negative one half, but I could have used negative four, negative one fifth. So I plug those in there. I simplified. And then this is the equation of the secant line with the slope of the secant line negative one tenth. Now it says, Use the de definition of the derivative, sometimes called the difference quotient, um, to find the derivative of each function with respect to x. All right. So, so here is, to find instantaneous velocity, we use a limit process. And this thing called the difference quotient. Let's see if I wrote it down. So the difference quotient says, uh, so think about it saying y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So if we do f of x plus h, so let's look at a graph. So I'm going to call this x. Well, if I go a little bit over, I'll call that an h distance. This is then x plus h. So those are, um, you know, so f of x plus h subtract f of x all divided by h. So that's the difference. That's the difference quotient. Sometimes instead of h, they use delta x, so it would be f of x minus or x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. So depending on your professor, um, I, use, I use the h uh, model. Okay, so that's the difference quotient. To find instantaneous velocity or find the derivative, um, you use the limit process. So as h approaches 0, and we're going to say that the derivative 
is that process. So this is how we're going to do it. Notice here's the original function. The x plus h is everywhere there's an x, you're going to plug in x plus h. So here there's an x. So right there, we plugged in x plus h. So it's f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So negative 4 parentheses x plus h plus 2. Subtract the original negative 4x plus 2. And then you're going to simplify all that. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x plus negative or subtract 4h or plus negative 4h plus 2. And then this says subtract a negative. So that's plus 4x and then subtract 2. And notice what we have. The negative 4x and the positive 4x cancel. The positive 2, the negative 2 cancel. And then you simplify that. And what we have left is negative 4h over h. The h's cancel. And we don't even have to substitute 0 in for h because the h's uh, cancel altogether. And so the derivative or instantaneous velocity, I wrote it right down here, dy over dx, another way to write it would be m tangent and that's the slope of the tangent line derivative is the function that produces instantaneous velocity at a given x value okay i'm just going to leave this on the screen to show you the process but now we've got an x squared so x plus h squared plus 5 minus x squared plus 5 we're going to simplify that. Remember when we square it, it'll be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Because remember, x plus h times x plus h. If you FOIL it or just do the double distributive, you get this right here. And then subtract x squared. Oh, I didn't bring down the plus 5. Then subtract x squared, subtract 5. And then notice x squared cancel. 5's cancel. What we have left is 2xh plus h squared all over h. All three of those have an h in common. So we factor out an h, leaving h times 2x plus h. The h's cancel. And now as h, sub h approaches 0, you put a 0 in there. And what we're left with, so this right here is the derivative, which is the function that produces or gives us instantaneous velocity at a given x value. And they didn't give us an x value here. So right now we're just looking for the deriv derivative function. Just like that. Okay, I need to pay attention to the time. So I'm going to just leave this up here on the screen. Um, you can pause it so that you can kind of see what I did. Notice that x, I'm gonna, going to have to put the negative sign x plus h squared, which is what I did right there, plus 2, and there we've got another x, so x plus h plus 1, and then we subtract that whole thing. We subtract negative x squared plus 2x plus 1. So this becomes plus x squared, subtract 2x, subtract 1, and then look at all the things that cancel. This is the result. And then an h factors out, leaving negative 2x, subtract h plus 2, when you substitute 0 for h, the derivative function will then be negative 2x plus 2. And now when we plug, it did give us, ah, it gave us a given x value. So now you plug that negative 1 
negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. So that right there, this is the derivative function. This itself is instantaneous velocity. So the slope of the tangent line is 4 or 4 over 1. This right here is the derivative function. So the derivative is, derivative is not necessarily the slope. It can be if, if your function is a constant, because remember the slope of a horizontal line. Well, yeah, so the derivative in that case of just a horizontal line, the derivative, uh, the slope of the tangent line will always be zero. All right. So here I just did rational for each problem. Find the average rate of change of the function over the given interval. So find the average rate and find the instantaneous rate. So we first have to plug in negative 1. We plug in negative 1, and that gives us the y value. We plug in the second x. And here we get the second y. So then y2 minus y1 over x2. So over here, right over here, y2 subtract y1 over x2 subtract x1. And you simplify that. And let's see, I found the, uh, so that became... negative four tenths plus five tenths, which equals one tenth. There we go. And then we simplify all that, we get one fifth. So this, the average rate of change or the slope of the secant line, remember the secant line is going to look like this through a function, or in this case, it's a rational function. So it, might be doing something like, I don't know, something like that. Um, that's just the slope of that secant line. Okay. And then this is how, now this is tricky because this is the original function up here. So remember, wherever there's an x, you have to plug in x plus h. Well, now we've got two fractions. So we've got negative 1 over x plus h plus 3 plus 1 over x plus 3. So we're going to have to multiply here by x plus 3, giving us negative x subtract 3. And up here, x plus h plus 3. Then notice the x's cancel and the negative 3's cancel. But all of that is now over x plus h plus 3 times x plus 3, which I went ahead and simplified, and then simplified again. And notice, because this is h is over that, this is h over that, if we multiply both by the reciprocal, the h's cancel, leaving 1 over this stuff. And notice some things canceled. Um, whoops. No, we just simplified it all. And then when you plug in zero for the H, those two things cancel, leaving X squared plus 6X plus 9. And now you use the X value that they gave you, which is if they give you two points, you always want to use the first one unless I tell you otherwise. So if we plug negative one into where those X's are, this simplifies to one fourth. So the slope of the tangent line is one fourth. Okay. And then once you, so the next step is find the equation of the tangent line. So you do all this to find M tangent. And then once you know the slope and you have the, the x and the y, just plug it into point-slope form. 
and point slope, and that will give you y tangent equation. So that's what we did here. So y tangent, here's our y value. y subtract negative 1 equals m tangent of negative 4 times x subtract x1. We simplify, and what we get is this equation. This is the equation of the tangent line. Okay, and I think, yep, there's a couple more. All right, I'm going to end this, and then I'm going to do another one on derivative rules. All right, see you in a minute.